You don't go into basic research knowing that you're gonna, like Owen did, come out with a, a cure for a particular kind of cancer, but you go in there with the idea that you wanna understand how things work. I think anybody who's ever worked in research in whatever field and whatever branch of science is doing it because it's really a very fun thing to do. You have a problem and you want to solve it and uh, you work through it. I see little difference between people who really care about music or art, writing. Um, it's a creative enterprise and it's a wonderful feeling when it works. His work has been foundational for the development of drugs targeting tyrosine kinases that have impacted people with leukemia, lymphoma, and additional diseases as people discover the roles of those genes in other cancers as well. So the summer before even starting medical school, Owen applied to my lab for a job, and I was pleased. And my technician hired him to clean mouse cages. When he started working the lab, I realized that he was incredibly well organized. I'm incredibly chaotic. I wanted my lab books to look like, notebooks to look like him so that I didn't have to fool around, to, you know, look on my paper towels or something to find this because everything with Owen was so organized. I noticed that Owen would be in by nine and out by six and completed medical school at the same time. He's a very clear thinker. Uh, he's a very logical thinker. Uh, he's also very creative and innovative. He knew what experiments needed to be done. He honed it down to the central experiments that needed to solve a problem. All that just came together and, and just constantly led him to make big discoveries. Anytime anybody asks me what was your favorite time in life, most people you know, remember high school, but I, I remember medical school. I think it was wonderful. I, Worked in a great lab with Irv Weissman um, and uh, was just a wonderful mentor and, and developed a great relationship. So while he was in his first two years of medical school, I went on a sabbatical. Magically, somehow, I got tenure. So who took over my lab? Owen Whitty. He hired people. He recruited undergraduates to work in the lab. This is incredibly exceptional. Somebody who comes into a lab, not known for its expertise in the field that both of us were developing. And then when a crisis comes, he assumes leadership. Irv's a great mentor, a legendary mentor. Um, he brings out the best in people, but he was really quite instrumental in helping me get into David Baltimore's laboratory. David Baltimore, some people would describe as one of the uh greatest living scientists of our, you know, of our time. About the time Owen and I entered David Baltimore's lab, he had just won the Nobel Prize. So it was a, a very in, intense but positive kind of environment in which everybody knew you had a lot to uh, uh, live up to. All their labs are integrated on the same floor, and that was a, just a wonderful environment to do science, and everybody was all together and are meeting together every week. Um, so Owen worked on the retrovirus project. They began looking at a virus that causes lymphomas in mice. It was called the Abelson leukemia virus. That had a single gene. One gene could induce this complex type of leukemia reproducibly in the strain of mice. So that we could understand what this particular gene and its protein did, we could understand the mechanism of causation of at least one kind of leukemia. And they worked out a method to make these viruses. Today, all gene therapy is done with what they constructed. But the most important thing was when we figured out what type of enzymatic activity it had. And that was, that was a struggle. That was probably one of those long periods of time where you bang your head against the wall and wonder, what am I doing and will I ever get the answer? And the enzyme it was turns out to be the Abelson kinase. At the time, we thought it was perhaps a curiosity uh, related only to this funny virus we were studying. Uh, but as it turns out, there are literally hundreds of, of these kinases in the human genome, and many of them are now known to be related to different kinds of cancer. And in fact, a very large family of cancer drugs, anti-cancer drugs, are based on the knowledge of this class of enzymes and how they get activated in different kinds of cancer. So that was an amazing discovery. To be able to be sitting in the lab and see where 
a person like Owen Woody doing his basic science, getting something that some people just say, oh, what's that, a band on a gel? Or, but, but realizing the importance of it and then watching that whole process from beginning to end uh, where you saw a result done by a great scientist on the bench with a great mentor leading it and then saw how that got years later in a drug that really was uh, a major drug in treating cancer. So when Owen moved to UCLA, he continued on the able tyrosine kinase, and, and um, David did too, and they, they took it in various directions. So Owen made a lot of additional major discoveries about how that protein functioned, and particularly the human protein and various forms of, 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 of the onca protein in humans. I was here at UCLA, uh, and um, one of my students uh, was studying the cellular form of this gene called ABL or ABL. Uh, and uh, we were examining a number of different cell lines in which uh, we were hoping to isolate the normal protein. And the best thing happened, which is a true discovery, uh, one day, in fact, he called me late at night uh, saying, you know, I've got something really funny. This one cell line has two forms of the gene product that we're looking at. The normal one that we expected, protein of about 150,000 molecular weight, and then another one that was much bigger. And all of a sudden it clicked. There was something abnormal, a genetic aberration in that cell line, which was a type of human leukemia, which had activated this ABLE gene quite similarly to the way the mouse virus had mutated and activated the gene. So it was kind of a convergent evolution of a gene alteration between a mouse virus, which we knew caused cancer, and a human genetic abnormality causing this unusual protein. It's probably the first time uh, that a very clear demonstration of the activation of this class of enzyme um, in a particular form of human cancer had occurred. And it pointed the way directly that this would be a target for therapy. He worked on another area in, that, that is much more related to immunology. He under, uh, there, there had long been a problem um, uh, of a particular X-linked a gamma globulin anemia, it's just basically a X chromosome link defect in patients that uh, can't make B cells and so they're very defective, so they're immunodeficient. And it was called Bruton's X linked A gamma globulin anemia. And this was a major quest in the field. Many people worked on this. I, we even were trying to work on it and to try to understand what was the gene that caused this severe immunodeficiency. And um, so it, Owen, working again on the tyrosine kinase aspect of it, found the protein, and it's called Bruton's, now called, he discovered it, Bruton's tyrosine kinase, or BTK. It's an incredible set of stories, and at every point he either makes a methodological or a scientific insight which jumps the field forward. And we published those papers, and talked to every pharmaceutical company about it, and eventually somebody made an inhibitor of Bruton's tyrosine kinase. Now there, I think, are several coming into clinical practice, but the first one, called the Brutinib, is being used extensively to treat lymphomas and types of leukemias uh, in patients currently, and it's a very successful drug that's, that's helping a lot of people. He's gone on now to, to be working on prostate cancer and stem cells, so that's a new area for him. Uh, and you know, he'll just go on because he's a very creative guy. He sees what the important problems are, and he'll work on them step by step and solve them. So I first met Owen when I was applying for jobs. I was finishing my chief residency. I was at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, and I was interested in translational research in prostate cancer. And he himself was interested in prostate cancer and wanted to get into the field. With Rob's help, and also the help of Charles Sawyers, another fellow in my lab at the time, we started sort of a three-person effort and then expanding it as they each started their own labs uh, to analyze the sort of fundamental biology of prostate cancer, and particularly the stem cells that play a role in generating the organ, but also generating the disease. He realizes that ultimately basic science discoveries are important in as much as they, get, as they get translated or transferred into the clinic. And I think he felt that uh, to really complete the pie, so to speak, we needed both basic researchers, uh, kind of clinically oriented researchers, and then clinician scientists who could really uh, kind of bridge the gap. I think it's been one of the things as a, sort of at this stage of my career that's been exceptionally pleasurable is watching groups of faculty and their students and fellows join together to bring their science into the clinic. 
Uh, and by that I mean uh, not just doing the science and publishing it, but doing the science, publishing it, moving on and developing uh, work to the point of clinical trials uh, that I think are really changing the face of medicine. The environment of his lab was very conducive to learning. It was a large laboratory. Uh, everything from kind of from graduate students to postdoctoral students, even his wife Jamie, who has worked in the lab for many for all the years that I've been here. She's a fantastic uh, mom, wife, and molecular biologist, and that's a great combination. She has been absolutely crucial in all the work uh, that's gone in in my lab uh, over the last three plus decades. Um, she really deserves a lot of the credit for many of the things I'm being recognized for tonight. Owen is certainly one of the greatest scientists I, I would think that came out of Stanford. The, the precision of his work, the, the basic science focus of his work, et cetera, and the incredible success in the clinical arena, um, I, I, I just think that he, he would epitomize everything that uh, Paul and Arthur want in a scientist. He continues to evolve, to change, to work in new areas, to uh, stay at the forefront of what's going on in science and and uh, and very, you know, has a very clear vision of where he wants things to go. It is over and over again a story about somebody with boldness and insight and the ability to choose and nurture the very best people. And I think um, we'd all have to agree it's in the history of Stanford and the lineage from Kornberg to Berg and the rest.